It's the baby of BMW's crossover lineup, but you wouldn't know it by its size or price. Is that a good thing? What's up, folks? I'm Dave Underkoffler, editor-in-chief of Autolist.com, a sister company to CarGurus. The X1 got a complete makeover for 2023. It's bigger overall, more sophisticated under the hood, and more advanced inside and out. It's also more expensive. So does that mean it's too big for its own good, or does this X1 retain the bite-sized, fun-to-drive, and affordable nature of its predecessor? Let's go find out. But before we do, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so you can get alerts on all of our future updates. All right, let's do a walk around of the exterior, but before we do, a couple of housekeeping notes. There are two different versions of the X1 that you can get in this new generation. There's the X-Drive 28i, which we're testing, and then there's a performance-oriented version, and that's the M35i. So the 28i starts at about $38,000, and we're testing a fully loaded version, and the sticker here is about $51,000. So part of that sticker price includes a $2,300 M Sport package, and one of the main things that it adds is a more aggressive lower bumper and lower face here. So not every X1, especially the base models, are going to look like this. So overall, the X1 got a little more sleek. These are LED headlights. You've got a blacked out kidney grill. That's always been BMW's signature. And then down below, you've got the honeycomb grill. These are functional, whereas these are just for show. Turning to the side profile, this is where you can actually see the growth of the X1. Compared to the previous generation, this is up about 1.7 inches in terms of length. The wheelbase is up almost an inch. It also sits about 1.7 inches higher, and the width is nearly an inch longer. This now means that this X1 is about the same size as the first generation X3 that came out many years ago. Turning to our test car, this color is called Frozen Pure Gray Metallic. I like it. It's a really nice sort of matte look. We've got optional 20 inch alloy wheels in our tester, and then also the shadow line trim package, which means we've got blacked out mirror caps and then blacked out trim along the length of the car. And then turning to the back, remember our model has the M Sport package, which means you're gonna get a more aggressive bumper and lower fascia down here. I like the diffuser and the dual exhaust outlets. That's pretty cool. I like the overall look of the X1, especially in the back here. It's modern, it's crisp, but I wanna show you what a new Honda CRV looks like. Here you go. And then back to this, kind of looks the same despite this BMW costing about $20,000 more. All right, so as I mentioned, we're testing the X-Drive 28i, which means under the hood, we've got a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine that makes 241 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. Compared to the previous generation of X1, that has a nice little bump of power. It's 13 extra horsepower and 37 extra pound-feet of torque. Also new for this generation is it has a seven speed dual clutch transmission rather than the eight speed that the previous version had. And now all wheel drive is standard on all X1 models. But X1 buyers looking for more power do have the M35 to choose from. That does have a two liter four cylinder turbocharged engine, but it has 312 horsepower. If you're curious about pricing, that M35 version starts at about $51,000, which is the same price as our fully loaded base model that we're testing right here. So which would you choose, the fully loaded base model with less power or the more aggressive M35? Let us know in the comments below. Turning to the interior, I really like what BMW has done here. It's a nice mix of luxury and sport and comfort. In terms of tech, you've got about 21 inches of total screen here. You've got some for the instrument panel and then another here for the infotainment system. This has wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Uh, the screen is good. It's nice and crisp. Uh, it is a little slow to some of your inputs, so that does get frustrating. But generally, uh, all the menus are where you would expect them to be. It's pretty easy to use. As you can see here, this is one of my nitpicks. I like that BMW has it set up. You've got dedicated buttons right here on the side of the screen, no matter what's displayed here. That's nice. But the thing that does drive me a little nuts about this setup, yes, we've got our dedicated climate control here in terms of both the driver and passenger temperature. But to get to fan speed, you've got to hit climate menu and you've got to sort of find it here on this screen. I do wish that they've got this digital screen. I do wish that there was just an easy way to find the fan speed on this screen. In terms of the instrument panel, this is a configurable display, so you can choose between the navigation or maybe the audio. Uh, it's nice, but it can seem like it's a little bit of wasted space. Sometimes it's difficult to find the information that you want to display there, so that is a little frustrating at times. Uh, and then we've got a premium package on our tester, so that means that we've got a heads-up display. We also have a panoramic moonroof, Harman Kardon audio system. We have wireless smartphone charging down here. I really like that this there's a little sort of latch here that holds your phone in place as you're driving around. That's kind of handy. 
handy. Uh, a pair of USB-C charge ports. And then here you've got a center console with some key functions. You've got the shifter, it's actually just this toggle right here. Uh, you've got the engine start stop button, volume knob is down here, and then some drive mode buttons. I also like that there's a little hidden storage space right here in this armrest, that's kind of handy. And then down below this console, there is storage space, but what's frustrating about it is that it's easy to see what's down there. So if you park on the street, anyone walking by can see what's stored down there. And then finally, I can't talk about the interior without mentioning these seats. Shout out to BMW. These are some of the most comfortable seats I've sat in in a really long time. Really nice side bolstering. There's even bolstering up here for your shoulders. Overall, very comfortable. I really like these. In terms of rear seat space, I really like what BMW has done with this generation of X1. There's plenty of room all around. If you've seen these videos before, you know the drill. I put the front seat to where I would have it when I'm driving there. So basically I'm sitting behind myself. And as you can see, plenty of room for my legs, my knees, my feet down below, and then headroom is pretty remarkable. And that's great considering we do have a panoramic moonroof on our tester. So overall, this is where the growth of the X1 really benefits the passengers inside it. One nice little trick, and you'll see this in other automakers as well, is that the seat backs in here are sort of carved out to give you more room for your knees. That said, this isn't a full-size SUV or crossover. We've had a pair of car seats back here, and all week there's been a little bit of kicking going on in the back seats, so just parents, one thing to prepare for. And then finally, you do have a few goodies back here just to keep things comfortable. You've got some vents here with their own adjustment. You also have a pair of USB-C charge ports, a nice wide center armrest here with some cup holders built in. Turning to the back, despite this being BMW's smallest crossover, there's a really nice amount of usable space in the cargo area. I also like that even though this is now higher than the previous generation of X1, it's a very low load floor. You can get things in here really easily. Cargo space is up over the previous generation of the X1, and if you need even more space, the seats are split 40, 20, 40, and fold flat to get extra stuff back there. Finally, a quick shout out to BMW. Down below, rather than having a tire inflating kit, BMW actually does have a spare. It's not a full size spare, but this thing is much better than a lot of the inflator kits many automakers are using today. All right, now driving impressions. I gotta say, I really do like this engine. 241 horsepower is more than enough for this X1, so don't think you need to jump up to the M35 to get that full 312 horsepower. This absolutely gets the job done. I will say, I do have some nitpicks about how the X1 handles and drives, but it's easily solved by putting it in the sport mode. So two things I don't love, there's a bit of turbo lag from either a dead stop or when you're on the freeway and you go to pass somebody. And then also, generally, the steering feels a little too light. There's not as much feedback as I would expect or hope from a BMW. But if you put this car into sport mode, both of those issues go away. You get a lot more turbo response when you go to accelerate and the steering firms up and it turns into the BMW that you would hope this car is. And that's where this X1 becomes a lot of fun. It's perfectly comfortable for daily driving, but if you get into canyons like the one we're in right now, the suspension is really nicely tuned, really good handling, really good feedback and sense of where the car is on the road. It kind of reminds you of BMWs from yesterday. Some of the modern versions of their cars today can feel a little numb. They're kind of losing that BMW-ness that's always made them so great, but it's here. You can kind of feel it. It's more exciting than you would expect a compact crossover to be. Another nice thing about this X1 is how locked in and solid it feels. I've been on the freeway driving 90 miles an hour. You don't even realize you're going that fast. You can truly feel the German heritage, that Autobahn tuning uh, in this X1. So that's a nice little bonus. But this X1 doesn't just thrive in high-speed driving, it's also super maneuverable in tight parking lots and parking spaces. Over the weekend, I got this thing into the smallest parking space you've ever seen. I was really proud, but it was all because of the car. It's very maneuverable, so I like that. It really adds to the daily drivability of the X1. Finally, in terms of visibility, it's good, not great. Uh, the A-pillar is pretty thin, so you can see outward, forward pretty easily. Visibility over my shoulder is a little tight. This B-pillar right here is kind of thick, so it can be sometimes hard to see the car that's in the lane next to you. And then out the back, it gets a little tight. The glass is a little narrow, and then the headrests, although they do fold out of the way, when they're up, they do impede your view a little bit. In terms of competition, this X1 has a lot of it. There's a number of different compact luxury SUVs and crossovers you could compare this to. There's a number of them from Mercedes, there's the Audi Q3, there's the Volvo XC40, the list goes on and on. In terms of how this stacks up, this is gonna be on the sportier side of pretty much anything else you compare it to. And that's a good thing, sporty in the sense that you're gonna have more fun driving it, and yet it's still not gonna be uncomfortable, and you're really not giving up anything in return for those driving dynamics. So that means this X1 rises to pretty near the top of the list for compact luxury crossovers. 
All right, folks, there you have it, our review of the BMW X1. Pros, well, we really like the size. It's easy to park and maneuver, yet plenty spacious inside. We also like the driving dynamics when it's in sport mode and the comfortable, well-built interior. Cons, well, there is that turbo lag we mentioned earlier. The X1 can get expensive when you start adding options to it, and we don't love the climate control functions inside. But overall, we really do like this new X1. We think it's a great mix of size, comfort, practicality, and luxury. And what we love is that the best part of the X1 comes standard on the base model. So don't think you need to add a lot of expensive options to get what makes this car great. So for reviews or listings of this X1 or anything else you're shopping for, new or used, be sure to check out cargurus.com. And before you go, like and subscribe to this channel so you can get alerts on all of our future updates. Thanks for watching.